All right, to my guest this morning, Marika Lepeli. All right, I got the name right. There you are, resident representative, Ebert Steve Tang. Good morning. Good morning to you. We also have uh, Godiva. Godiva, you are a lawyer and a feminist. Yeah, you can say feminist lawyer. A feminist <laughs> lawyer. All right, let's, let's try and understand this. Mm. Who is a feminist? A feminist is a person who believes in the social, political, and economic equality of men and women. That's what a feminist is. It's simple. Mm. Some, some have felt that this has been bent a lot more towards the women, that uh, the feminists are always fighting for the women's rights, that uh, we never get to hear of men's rights being advocated for. Men get battered too. Men go through challenges too, uh, like the women. Of course, you cannot compare and contrast surely. Mm -hmm. The scale for the women is a lot higher. But Exactly. I like that you said that because that's why it focuses on women. Feminism is a movement that was started by women who were tired of being treated like second-class citizens in the world. And we know for a fact that for centuries, women mm -hmm. have been treated as half-human beings, whether it's in terms of owning property, whether it's in terms of their rights in marriage, whether it's in terms of being paid equally for the same work that they do with men, women are still getting paid less. So feminism, it makes sense that this movement should focus on the people who need the help. Doctors don't treat people who are okay. So the men are okay, you think? For the most part, right, men have problems, but you said it yourself, when you compare and contrast to the issues that women face, it's a very small percentage. And one thing that you also have to acknowledge is that the, pa the people who are doing the fighting for men's rights are actually feminists. Because feminists are not just saying that treat women better. Feminists are saying treat women like you would treat anybody else. Which means if you're going to be kinder to women, you have to be kinder to men as well. So feminism does not place men and women against each other, no. Feminism is about equality at the end of the day. Marika, I don't know how long you have been in Uganda, but uh, what picture do you see? How do you think we treat our women in this country? Um, I've been only two years in Uganda, mm. so I think probably any Ugandan woman or any Ugandan man is better in a better position to judge on that. But I think um, from what I see in these two years that um, Ugandan women are very present in, in, in politics and in business. Um, but I do see also, I think maybe a contrast also from what I hear, mm. of course I can't say from personal experience, but in other spheres, and even in politics, there are, there are limits, and in the domestic sphere, there are definite limits, and there is no equality of men and women in, in the domestic sphere, I would say, from what I'm told and what I've experienced sort of secondhand. Well, Diva, there's a feeling that you women are crying too much. Uh, a lot has been done for you, but you cry too much, uh, a lot more than is necessary. Women this, women the other, and, and so on. And, and look, as an individual, sometimes I feel, okay, some of these cries mm -hmm. are legitimate. But again, here is the other catch, that uh, some of you feminists, women activists, you are hypocrites. I'm sure you have heard that. You mm. jump onto a story that say, has been highlighted by the media, like NTV. We get a story of this woman. She's been grappling with this and so on. When we highlight the story, that's when you all begin to call press conferences and you're talking about it and so on. Before that, you did little or nothing at all about it. But away from that, there are other cases of women who are grappling with one predicament too many. But you're not interested in those. You're interested in these that capture media attention, so you want to be seen to be doing something for the women. First of all, let me say that it is the job of the press to highlight stories, right? One and of we the are happy things, to do that. Exactly. And one of the things that feminists speak about in the first place is representation of women in the media, the ways that our media report about women. That's a very relevant aspect of the feminist movement. So. When you talk about the fact that women are sitting down and doing nothing until a story gets reported by, let's say, NTV, what are you trying to say about the work that all these NGOs and organizations that work on women's rights are doing? Uonet, FIDA Uganda, these are organizations that have huge budgets every year, right? They're doing work. But you can't do everything. The same way NTV can't cover every single story. And I'm, I'm very good at attacking you guys online when you cover a story in a manner that I don't think it should have been covered, right? So I understand that people are really within their rights to critique the way that feminists do their work. But the fact of the matter is that we cannot do everything. And that's granted, but you see, why. the point here I'm making is, when, 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 when we see you ladies, some of you jumping onto some of these stories, you're thinking, wait a minute, 
Uh, I know there's quite a bit of work going on, yeah. Mm. And I'm not talking about every organisation there, are NGOs that I've interacted with, and I think they're doing a good job, mm -hmm. without a doubt, you know. But mm. there are some others are just individuals. Mm. They want to jump on the bandwagon, you know. Everybody's talking <laughs> about this case, so let's be relevant. So I'm thinking, oh come on, you should but have been relevant that a before problem, that. Joel, I think it is. It's Joel, I don't think that it is a problem for any human being mm. to stand up and say that I believe in the equality of men and women. It's never a problem. No, I'm talking it about does, the we cannot hypocritical call it a bandwagon approach effect. to it. How is it hypocritical to be fighting for the rights of an individual who is facing a problem in that moment? It is a is problem it when, when you're fighting, fighting for this one because everybody's talking about it, but there are other, you know, several that are silent. You don't you care are, about them. They don't get us into the media. But then also, I think that you are assuming that feminists are this small group of women huddled in a room somewhere talking about whichever problem is now hitting it on, on the Maybe, media. I don't know. That's I don't not, attend that's your That's not meetings. a fact, right? That's not sure. a fact. We, the feminist movement, like any other movement, I want to point out that this is a movement, has a set of agendas, right? Mm. So while we're working on violence against women, we're also working on women's labor rights. While we're working on women's labor rights, we're also working on political representation of women. So we are capable of multitasking and we do it just because you see one thing happening in the public eye doesn't mean there's not so much happening in the background maria where is the place of women rising up standing up to be counted uh, because you see the world we live in does not dole things out to us on a silver platter man or woman you've got to bend your back over backwards break it sometimes to stand up and be counted to stick out from the crowd and so i keep wondering as we tell women, you know, sometimes to wait for these, their rights to be respected and so on, do we tell them that, look, you have got to stand up and be counted, you've got to be relevant, you know, if it is a job and uh, I don't like it when there's unfair treatment that a man is given mm -hmm. a job and a woman is not it, they qualify equally and the like, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's just that this human being, away from being the fact that she's a woman, this human being is not as qualified for the job, that mm -hmm. women need to add value, they need to mm -hmm. be relevant, for them to be seen as relevant. I think actually the common no wisdom is in a lot of countries that for women to achieve what a man achieves, uh, she has to work twice as hard and be twice as good because there is already prejudice and uh, preconceptions about her abilities. And uh, maybe- Is that sometimes just in the minds of the women? No, no I doubt because it. Because not every no. organization operates that way. No, no, I doubt it. Because also um, there are certain attributes, I think, to, to get somewhere in, in politics and business. There are certain, um, Behaviorisms, I think you have to 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 um, con comply with, mm. and quite often you can say, okay, this is more like men's behavior or something. So I, I see a lot of successful women who work twice as hard, but who adapt to the rules of the game that are set usually by men, by men for men, and so they have a harder time because I mean, I'm not saying uh, feminism doesn't say men and women are biologically equal. They say they have equal rights. They should be, as Godiva was saying, legally, politically, economically, socially equal. So of course, women might have different styles overall. They might behave differently. Um, and then to, to succeed in a world that's been determined by um, and dominated by men and their rules, it's harder. So I think it's unfair um, you know, to imply that women whine and do not work as hard. It might be that work, but they work differently, mm -hmm. but I think generally they probably have to prove themselves work twice as hard to achieve mm -hmm. what men are achieving. Good evening. Here is why sometimes I feel that, um, again, you, the ladies, uh, our mothers, our sisters, wives, girlfriends, I don't know, depending on uh, whichever category you do for Also men are feminists, so you can um, refer to yeah. feminists as you women, but men are feminists. Everyone should be I didn't be say feminist, feminist. Everyone I just said uh, you women, good mm. ladies and so on, I didn't use the word feminist. But, but here is why sometimes I think you are your own problem. Um, when women feel that, you know what, I've got to be given an unfair advantage, especially after time when it looks like it has run its race. I look at the 1.5 points that are added to the girls as they join university. Maybe mm. there was a time when this was necessary, but today mm. ladies are performing a lot better than the boys. You, you know, because you see, I believe, by the way, that women have a lot of potential. They have got what it takes. I've got sisters, I've got a mother, I've got ladies around me, you know. So when I see women putting themselves in a disadvantageous position, saying, you see, for me, I need to be given an advantage. Why? Because I'm not as capable, I'm not as good. And I'm thinking, to me, actually, that's nonsense. Women are capable, they are just as good as the men. And so maybe we need to begin to slowly but surely remove some of these. Why? Because they make the girl child to think, I'm not as good as the boy. 
mm. you know so that's why i need to be given that extra 1.5 that's why I, be, I need to be given a little bit of a push why the boys are better i'm thinking no that's not the case we need to move so away from Joe, this don't we okay first of all i want to just caution you mm. to not think about this in a very parochial manner because it's not just this small thing about 1.5 in university it's you one of them and uh, okay. I, I think it's can a I, big deal i don't you, know why you think it's can parochial. i finish can i finish so when you look at the situation of women mm. and women's rights worldwide this is a conversation that has been being had for when was the convention and the elimination of, of all forms of discrimination 19. against women passed? I think this was in the late 1940s, right? This is a conversation that has been had worldwide, supported by research, supported by statistics, mm. which have shown that women in the different societies we occupy, not just in Uganda, are treated in a substantially different and disadvantageous manner, right? In a manner that disadvantages them. So it was noted that some special considerations need to be made for this particular group of people. And that's what I'm saying and could be the problem. The women feel we are vulnerable, Let so we need to be treated specially. When you make a law saying that you should provide ramps to allow persons with disability to get into a building, is that you treating them as vulnerable? No, actually, or actually because just allowing they are not them as to access mm -hmm. the same exact services as you can access. No, I'm thinking that because analogy does not work for the women. You works, know why? Because you see, for somebody exactly. that's using a wheelchair, is not as advantaged so as I am with all due respect. Because that persons you see, with disability can't do things that you can do, which is a lie. Some things, by the way, not all things. You know, brain-wise, they can operate as well as I do, even better. Yeah, but mm. if it gets to climbing steps, for goodness sake, go divide. It's common sense. I'll climb them easily. Exactly. A wheelchair person cannot, so exactly. they need a ramp. So brain-wise, Joel, women, brain -wise, Joel mm. I can operate exactly the same way. So why do you need 1.5 extra points? Because. Ten years ago, my father would not have sent me to school. This is a reality for a number of women in this country. Girls are still being sold for a sack of posho by parents. We have an anti-FGM law in this country, mm. which was passed in 2010. Women are still being mutilated. And those are evils daily. that we need to face head no, because but how? You, you cannot Maybe ignore the how is those, the issue. You cannot ignore those evils and then limit your analysis to these small things but it does that count. you keep talking about. I it don't know. Counts, I, but your analysis has to be more holistic. That's why I called it parochial. It has to be more holistic and cover all these issues. Yeah, because but again, feminism you see, is when, just when you parochially look at points. something, it will appear parochial to you. No. Here is, here is why I, and, and this is my prison, through my prison, Marika. Mm. I think we are sending a wrong message to some of these girls. And, and I could be wrong, but that's how I see it. And I've met some girls who now think, you know, well, I don't have to work as hard because something mm. more is going to be done for me. You know, some of them feel, hey, seems like God wired the man, the boy, a lot better than he did me. That's why I need to be pushed mm. a little bit. I think what you're talking that about, seems to be the message we are sending. Joel, now. I think what I you're talking about is the effects of patriarchy because that's what patriarchy tells women. And right? why should Patriot. women Patriot. believe that? Because you're not less than we are, are you? Joel. Well, that is, but but okay. that is not what affirmative action is doing, I think. Mm, At least yeah. from, from all the countries or women I've seen, affirmative action does not tell women you are worth less or you can do less. It's just as Godiva was saying, it's, it's enabling access. Because you can't only look at the number of students in university, and I agree that women all over the world have really you know, increased their share in education as, as being mm. students. In Uganda, they're performing but, better but than the boys. In, in a lot of Western countries as well. I mean, but you do have to look also at you know completion figures, at and who sits in the administration of universities, who sits in those structures, and there's still sort of quite an imbalance, which also has an effect how how girls will perform and how will they perform later and who gets admitted. So I think those things have to be taken into consideration as well. Having said that, of course you have to review affirmative action again and again and see whether it's still doing what's supposed to do or not. But for example, I mean, uh, in Germany, where I come from, uh, they're, they're imposing uh, quotas now for corporate boards, right? Because they said, oh, it hasn't worked. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we've got advanced so much in education, we've advanced in politics, but if you look at hi higher management and the boards, uh, there is a small, small minority only who, is, who are women. And so they're wondering, where is it? This is the famous glass ceiling. Mm -hmm. Where does it start and why is it still there, in spite of all the progress that has been made? And so the quota becomes necessary. And so the quota becomes necessary, yeah. and even the conservative governments have agreed now yeah. it's necessary. When do you get to a point and say this has run its race? We cannot do this for forever. And, and for mm. me, I think that, that that's where I'm coming from. Of, mm. uh, we probably need to begin to review some of this affirmative action. Mm. Very much needed, especially some time back, you know. But, but, but increasingly, we are beginning to see ladies uh, as perspicacious as the men, you know, probably even a lot more. And then we need to be sending out a different message altogether. But away from that, Godiva. 
Okay. Okay. Sorry, just to answer you, we mm. stop when women are equal. In all spheres, like yes, you would say, in, in all spheres, spheres. and not just maybe at university. Women, so you better join and, us. And, and how do you know that uh, now well. equality has come through? <laughs> we'll know the same way we know that there's no equality right now. That, that, that sounds very <laughs> hypothetical. No, it doesn't sound no. very hypothetical. You see, there's got to be yardsticks to some of these uh, exactly. things that we embark on. And you need on. to Otherwise pay attention to those shell. yardsticks. I feel that you are ignoring those yardsticks. No, I'm not. Actually, I've given, you, but I've given you examples here, you know, because uh, inadvertently, some, some, to some of these young girls, you know, the message received out to them. But I know Joel, you're sending out so a good easy? message. I have a question for you now, Joel. Why Please is ask. it so easy for you to believe mm. that affirmative action is giving women an, an inferiority complex? But you don't believe that the effects of living in a society that mm. privileges men over women and constantly tells women that your place is in the kitchen, you don't mm. belong in school. Why don't you believe that that can give someone an inferiority? Actually, complex? that your latter statement is not a statement of mm. fact because I don't believe women need to be in the kitchen. I believe women I need didn't to say be you out there. I didn't believe that. You I said, said that that is what that's what a patriarchal society tells us. And it's wrong for so us to have that. So why can you believe mm. that feminism and its effects in trying to correct that injustice? Mm. is causing an inferiority complex. But you don't see the inferiority complex that is Actually, what I'm saying is that uh, this latter is caused by the former that we're talking about of, uh, you know, let's give women a push. Because, you see, we are saying, no, women, get out of so the kitchen. So pushing them down You're is able. okay, no, but no. giving them a push is a problem. I doubt you're even listening. Women are capable. They've got all that it takes, you know, to be like the men, even a lot better than the men. And we need to increasingly keep sending that out, you know. But sometimes while we do the affirmative action, which is needed in some cases, many years ago it was needed. I don't know if it still is today. I think it needs to be thrown out the window. Why? Because women are capable. They are excelling. Which you know, aspect a lot of more affirmative action are you talking about in particular? Affirmative action in education? Affirmative action... I think we need to review everything and see how far we have come. Are we making progress? Let's talk about affirmative action for the women. Um, you know, as far as them having a woman's representative for every district. And um, mm. I think there was a time when we needed to do that so that women can begin to have access to these spaces. Mm. But question, when we say as a woman you're going to become a woman's MP for this district, are we ameliorating the women in that district or one woman? Are we actually uplifting the women in that district or are we doing it for just one woman? Well, the logic behind the affirmative action for women in parliament, first of all, our constitution doesn't call them women's MPs. They're just women MPs. It's affirmative action to get more women in parliament. These women are not in parliament as representatives of women. They are there as women representing their particular districts. So in terms of increasing just the presence of women in parliament, I think it's been successful if that's the only indicator we are looking at. Is it but working in as far as the end game is concerned? Besides the truth of the matter that is that there. everybody, including Ugandan feminists, has been complaining about the way that that affirmative action is done. Is it actually having the impact that it's supposed to have when these women get to parliament? Do they speak to issues that actually concern the women from their constituencies? So that's an issue. And like she said earlier, affirmative action needs to be reviewed often, right? And this is a conversation that we're having as Ugandans about reviewing these specific things. But you can't pick on this particular thing which can be reviewed and then use it. That's the point I'm saying, that we need to begin movement. to slowly but surely begin to review th all these different things. You know, because, mm. you see, there are critical points that the feminists raise. But, uh, you see, out there, you are painted in bad light. Why? Because of certain things which can be addressed, which can be reviewed. You wanted to come in. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned the women MPs. Um, 10 to years of women MPs, but still most women run on those tickets. Mm -hmm. Hardly any woman stands in an open constituency. So why is that? You know, so that is something also to be investigated. Is it mostly they don't have a chance to run against men uh, competitors, male competitors. So, so the question again, are they, are they not as good as their male competitors or are there other factors that make it so much harder for a woman to compete in politics so successfully if they're not protected by this affirmative mm -hmm. action bubble? Mm -hmm. So I think this, those are things that have to be looked at much more yes. in much more detail. But if there's the other feeling that uh, by, by, by some men out there that you know what, these some feminists, yeah, I like to qualify my statements, you mm -hmm. know, so you don't just say men. Mm -hmm. Not every man thinks a certain way. Mm -hmm. Some men feel that these feminists here, yeah, one, they are breeding our wives to become rebels, you know, to now want to step on our heads. And, and that's the feeling. And, and here is why they could have a point, even though maybe not. But you see, sometimes it looks like 
the women's movement, feminists, etc., etc., good cause it is they've embarked on, but sometimes it looks like the decision has been made, knowingly or unknowingly, inadvertently, really, that the enemy is the man. Let's point our guns to him, let's fight him. That's the perception out there. And I keep thinking, instead of this that seems to be the case, you know, because for much of, you know, many of the women, it looks like, you know, they're fighting the men and that kind of thing, battering the men verbally and the like, and, and saying all these different things. How about we get the men on board? Absolutely. And say that, you know what, instead of holding press conferences and we say, these men, you know, they're all lousy and that kind of thing, we get them on board. And we begin to talk and say, by the way, men, you need your woman in good, in good health, you know, so beat her not. You need her to, to add value to you, so allow her to go to school, allow her to go and allow, work. Allow her, you know? that is... That <laughs> yeah, is because <laughs> currently they are disallowing them, you know, and yeah, but that is exactly uh, we need to tell some problem. of these men that, by the way, do not stop your woman from going to work. Mm. Please let her go and work. But Joel, do you see the problem with a situation in which we are two adults, mm -hmm. but you get to decide if I go to work or not, if I go to school or not? Do you see the problem with that situation? I do, and that is why I'm yes. saying if for the men who are, many so, of them that are stopping their women from going to work, I'm saying let her go and work. Mm. Because your question was initially that there's a perception that feminists are turning women against men. Mm -hmm. That's they're, a perception saying, some men out there Yes, have. and they're saying that their wives should should now turn against them and not do, I don't know, you, you, you use the word butter them verbally. But I think that, one, I find it very disturbing that there is a number of men who are very invested in having partners that they can dominate over whom they can exercise that amount of control to the extent of deciding whether they go to school or not. Two, I do not think that there's any problem with women starting to fight for themselves and understanding well, that because that. you've just been saying you've just mm. been saying that oh women have an inferiority complex some of them they do and that's like a they fact. Are not so you have a problem with an inferiority complex and I you do. have a problem with women being aggressive so i i, I no, I, no, no, I no. Did I even say that? Are you that sure you I said are, that I have a, woman, a problem with women no. being aggressive, so standing up for their rights? what's wrong with women standing up for themselves, especially in relationships? I think everything is wrong when women don't stand up for their rights. Exactly. So um, we are completely in agreement, actually. We agree right I now. hope we are. Yeah. Yeah, let me just add also, um, I think that the point also was... Um, in a relationship, that's, that's exactly the point that feminists are making, of course, with we could be, uh, women being equal in worth and dignity and rights that the the partnership also should be more you know balanced and, and equal rights so not one is asking the other for permission mm. but it's a it's a joint project and and and, and couples discuss it right um, and and mentioning this thing that women are uh, men are worried about women turning against them I just want to bring in a few studies mm. which show um, that is a win-win situation you know there's often the perception that if, if women gain men lose but there are studies actually that show the opposite, that even, that also men's lives become better. The individual exactly lives... Exactly the point I was making. Exactly. she goes to school, you know, adds value. But it's not you allowing her to school. To. But it's not you allowing her to school to go to school, but you kind of arrange. Well, she if goes I need to school. Given, you know, if you, yeah. if you have the money as a man, why not? Yeah. <laughs> 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 anyway. I, I don't know why you're laughing. You see, I, I'm, 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 I, I, I like that... Um, we think with our heads and not our hearts. I tell you that through some of my friends and some mm. of them get offended. Because you see, sometimes we, we are very emotional the way we reason out things. And I'm thinking, mm. no, 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 no. We, we, we need to use our heads, you know. Mm. All right. Mm. So we now seem to diagnose the problem as um, Uganda is still a patriarchal society. And I agree. How do we better that? Practically, away from the men bashing, you know, because you see, the way some of these men, you know, who, who I also have a problem with, you know, but the way they are wired, you bash them and call them all these names, they dig in their heels. You know, you talk about, yeah, you do have to should get be them. going to work. Now they say, all right, not only will I not allow you to, will I stop you from going to work, but uh, I don't know, do a lot more. So they dig in their heels. And that's why I was saying, maybe we need to use a bit of euphemism and say, look, this is good for you, I as opposed to yeah. the bashing, you know, that we hear from women much of the time, and I'm thinking this is totally counterproductive. Let's, let, let's, let's be more cogent, let's reach out to these men and help them understand that, by the way, it is a good thing when your wife goes to work, it's a good thing when your wife wants to do a master's and she goes and does the master's. Do not stop her, if anything, fund the master's degree, you know, as opposed to the whole bashing that's all over the place, calling men names and... Uh, when that happens, they dig in their heads and say, okay, so you're calling all right, so we shall resist a lot more. Why aren't we doing that? 
I, I agree. Men definitely have to be on board because you can't change patriarchal societies without men changing. It's not just women changing, it's men changing as well. And as I, I mentioned, I think you have to show, show that it's a win-win situation. Men's, men's lives, quality of lives are better in more gender equal society. And the whole society profits, usually economically, uh, in terms of innovation, societies with more gender balanced you know, more gender balanced societies profit, you know, economically and socially. So I think it's, it's of benefit to the men and I think that discussion has to go on so men can be convinced of that. Yeah. But Eva, sometimes I feel like you good people are on a head banging project and this is why. You know the rights of the women, you know what the constitution says, you know what should be availed to the women and not, not even doled out to them. But uh, how many women out there know that it is their right to go to work, it is their right to go to school, it is their right to do certain things, but they are living in the conditions in which they are stopped from doing this by their husbands, by their fathers, and so on. How many? But and maybe what are you good people doing about it? Besides telling them, fight for your rights. Hey, but this woman might ask, what are those rights? How do I even fight for them? I don't know them. Joel, so that's part of the work that feminists and women's rights activists are doing, really. The work of educating women first about their rights and then about how to improve their lives. And they're not only educating women, they're educating men as well. If you look at the work that organizations like FIDA are doing, they do a lot of outreach work, UONET, going up country. And Mifumi and land yes, rights. Yes, Mifumi as well. I think there's an organization called the Land Alliance. Mm. They're doing a lot of mm. the work of sensitizing women and their communities about their rights and the way that they should be treated. But it's a continuous task and also, it needs more hands on deck. So for example, Joel, I don't think that you should just sit and say, oh, you feminists are head banging and whatever. Why don't you join in? Because if we had more Actually, hands I'm on deck, Actually, I'm helping you to derive better be strategies of how to progress <laughs> better. Uh, to not identify where all. the challenges are, not, you know that uh, no, as you fight for the rights of these women, Joel, you help them understand. criticisms which are often based thing. on a misunderstanding. I like people who criticize me, you know why? They help me get better. But As opposed to, to everybody telling me, ah, Joel, you're a good presenter and so on. I like those. You know, it they has encourage to be constructive me. However, criticism. I, I listen. Oh, you think it is not? It's not constructive. Do you not think it's a head banging project if you are fighting for the rights of women who don't know their rights? And I'm saying, maybe we need to do a little bit more of that. I'm I know that you are doing on, that, but uh, can we do it a lot more? Help these women I'm understand. I'm saying that that's based on their an rights. ignorance of the work that feminists no, it's and, not ig and, and the Ugandan. So why are we still the way we are? Doing? You know, Godiva, oh, well, the yeah. test of the pudding is in the eating. We are still the way we are because of the it's things that so you just said, right? And that's what I'm saying, you need to address them. I think this women's movement is addressing yes, them. It and is addressing the rights them. movement. It's, it's not just it's the women's movement. Are we making as much progress? Then why are we still the way we are? It's often cultural society. factors, right? And culture changes, but it changes slowly more often than not. And uh, it is a slow process. But yeah. of course, the more champions you have on board, the better. The better. I was, I was reading, I think, a story last week. It was, was it last week or two weeks ago? It was Black Women's Equal Pay Day in the United yeah. States of America. <laughs> Right? Can you say that we are at the same level that the US is? No, we can't. But women there are still fighting for equal pay. Women there are still talking about violence against women to this day. So it's a process. It's not just going to happen overnight, especially considering the backlash that comes towards feminism and feminists and women who actually dare to stand up and speak for themselves and fight for their rights. So we're not fighting in a vacuum, right? We are fighting in a society that exists and is very interested in maintaining this status quo because this status quo works for a certain group of people. Of course those people are going to fight to maintain that status quo. It's like telling Kiza CJ, what are you still doing up to now? Nothing has changed, you know? He has to continue doing the work that he's doing regardless of how slow the progress he is making because right. the work needs to be done. And let's keep doing the work. Let's make lives yes. better for women, for yes. human beings. Good evening, yes. Marika. Thank you for talking to us this morning. Thank, Thank you, you for much. having us, Joel. Coming up is my opinion. So here's the thing. One day I will have daughters, uh, hopefully, uh, and I'll have sons too. Oh, that sounds like too many. But, but yeah, I'll have children of both sexes. And as a father, I think it will be my responsibility to inoculate into these my children that you know what, none of you is less than the other. I'm not going to treat any of you specially. No, that nonsense is not going to happen. 
Why? Because you're both capable. You both have what it takes. Yeah, one might be weaker physically, that's totally understandable and the like, but you will both go to school. Good schools are available opportunities to all of you. Why? Because you're both capable. I think we need to do that for this our good country. We need to tell the young ladies, the girls out there, that you are capable. You can do just as good as the boys. Even better, and it's showing. You look at the results. Senior six, senior four, etc., etc. University. The girls are performing a lot better than the boys. Can we help them understand that they've got what it takes, as opposed to, you know, you're special, you're vulnerable, you just cannot make the cut. I think that's counterproductive. But let me talk to the men, my fellow men. Um, truth be told, we, we, we are guilty. At least I'm guilty on your behalf. Yeah, we have battered the women. We have made them feel irrelevant and small, yet they are big. They, they can actually better our lives too. Let's encourage them. Let's, 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 let's avail opportunities to everybody so that this country gets better. All right, that's it for today's edition of The Big Story, a controversial one, but a discussion that will go on so that we keep understanding uh, these issues. Thank you for joining us. My name is Joel Senyonyi. Coming up in a bit is Everyday Life.